pretty it's good. Good. It's going. Welcome back to another episode of Curi of the Curious Cube. Uh, quite a lot has happened since we last talked. Uh, let's Including see. Including HMMT and CMIMC. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah, Harvard MIT math tournament. Right? <clears throat> yes, that's the Harvard and MIT. We were, and we were teammates too. Yeah, th those are the oh, Harvard yeah, MIT yeah. math tournament and the <laughs> Carnegie Mellon contest. And informatics, mathematics, uh, something like that. Yeah. Acronyms are hard. <laughs> and we actually did pretty well. Let's go, Luke. Congrats. I actually don't know what the placings They're are because I've never looked at them, but I assume you guys did well. <laughs> Wait, you were part of the committee, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I... Okay, maybe I shouldn't say okay, this because maybe HMT people are watching, but like... Okay. I, Hi, HMT like people! Hi. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I was, on the, I was on the problem writing and... or problem team and also the grading team, so I had to spend six hours slogging through your guys' horrible submissions. No, I'm just kidding. Um, most of them are pretty good. Hey, considering that we won team round, I, I say that we, we did pretty good. Well, just because you got points on a problem doesn't mean you wrote it up well. True. <laughs> okay. True. Be like that. <laughs> there is also the Putnam for uh, because we're over here talking about high school contests, but Holden, our favorite. Oh, yeah, this is true. Our favorite punching bag. I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, he was involved in his own contest, aka Putnam. The Putnam, yeah, the Putnam took is place... like a college math competition. What do you uh, ask? It took them? place. Oh, it it took place in December, but the results just recently came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel bad for the graders who had to grade my things. <laughs> <laughs> you did okay look you you were in like the top what, what was it like 20 like 30 right yeah something like that but so you see, I, just because I, I had a like high score doesn't mean that my write-ups were good it is considering that putnam like is really harsh on grading but so good for you Come okay on. i guess this is this is kind of true yeah yeah okay yeah well thanks uh, um by the way something that i should mention is that um, in the previous episode, I actually had a bit of a math error, um, which is that when I was talking about the Bonnik-Tarski paradox, about how you can cut up a sphere into some pieces and reassemble the pieces to make two spheres, I said that you can do it with two pieces. That's wrong. Um, I should have said you can do it with finitely many pieces. In fact, I think the smallest number of pieces you can do it with is five. You should check on wikipedia you can you can look that up i believe yeah. this is correct yeah hmm. i mean i i didn't notice i was uh, i was too busy basking in how ors you were uh i i i'm sorry that uh, like i i, I feel physically <laughs> sick just saying that <laughs> well, well that brings us to our next or at least the topic of this episode which is having some sense of maturity mathematical maturity <laughs> <laughs> and also we'll be talking a bit about MOSP, which is the Mathematical Olympiad. MOSP! I think you mean MOP. No, it's MOSP. No, janitorial it's camp. Yes, MOSP. janitorial camp. We learn how to sweep at MOP. <laughs> anyway, we'll be discussing... You learn the, how to sweep. I learn how to get swept. In this episode. That's the Math Olympiad program. It The word summer isn't part of the name anymore. It's run... And the MAA puts it on. The MOSP, on the other hand, is... Well, <laughs> maybe you'll find out. <laughs> yeah. So our first question asks, how have you developed as a math competitor throughout the years? Uh, hmm. Well, when I started off in math, I thought it was just, uh, I had no idea what an Olympiad, well, I didn't know what an Olympiad problem was until, like, probably around, or, like, literally, like, three years after I started. Like, Olympiad, uh, Olympiad problems weren't as, I, I guess they weren't as widespread as they are now. Um, are wow, this really is a while ago. Are they really that widespread now? They, they seem to be more so, since, like. I, I don't know, like... But yeah, when you, when you say three years after you started, that's like from what to what? Like, like this was like well after I first made Amy. Like, I had no idea what was... I, I knew that the USMO slash JMO existed, 
but I know I I had no idea what the problems even looked like. I I or or I guess when I saw them, I just didn't understand a single thing. So I didn't it, it didn't even really comprehend to me that they were proofs. So I was like, I have no idea what to do with any of this. Like at and I I guess there's like such a okay. This is like uh, I am completely going off on a tangent, but uh, there's such a like a weird jump between AMC to Amy. Like when you're an AMC person and you like at look at an Amy problem, you think that you could like at least with the like the first few, you could you think that oh I could probably do this. But like when you're like an, a person who barely made Amy and you're looking ahead to like Yusuma or Jam, you're like what on earth am I looking at? So I guess like a big part of my development was realizing that those types of questions are first of all like the actual questions that you'll be doing like yeah, I, like uh, they look more like what an actual research part- mathematician mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. yeah yeah like <clears throat> what, is that a really more true, realistic though? look like I mean OMC it problems. looks a lot like, closer than an really any true, problem right? does right I mean still but like research questions don't come formulated in like four lines of text. Uh, oh yeah, of course not. But like, the process of solving them though requires like similar channels of thought. So I guess yeah, my my well, my big development was discovering that those questions like was watching myself be less intimidated by that type of. Wait, question. I would disagree about the statement that they use similar channels of thought. But maybe this is okay, like maybe. a topic for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, to answer the question, I guess for me, like. As I developed as a math competitor, I think like well, what ends up happening is like you kind of have this, I imagine it as like this sphere of knowledge that you just keep adding to. And then like as you keep adding to it, you start to like notice patterns um, in the kinds of things you learn. And I guess one of these patterns is like the dichotomy between like tools and intuition. Cause like you you definitely need both of these things to become a good mathematician, right? Um, and yeah, so like I guess as what, I developed as a competitor, what, yeah. what are you? What do you mean by tools exactly? Like where are you drawing the line? Like, okay, so actually, what do you mean by I guess both that's of a pretty those? good question. Like, um, tools would be like knowing things like theorems and other random facts. I guess to give a super concrete example, like the fact that there are infinitely many primes that are like one mod p or something. Like this would be a tool, right? Um. Well, in fact, this is actually true for any any residue, but whatever, any non-zero residue. Um, but uh, and, and an example of intuition is just like, um, what do you have a good example of this, Luke? Uh, I mean, it depends. Well, I mean, even if you're talking about prime numbers, I guess there's some amount. Well, I mean, it depends on whether you're talking about like intuition that has formula formally rigorous stuff behind it, like. I mean, like in geometry, you can have some intuition about like what the diagram looks like, or like, you know, maybe in algebra, you get some sort of intuition about how the stuff is supposed to like fit together. It, it's, you know, it's maybe hard, not not that easy to explain or something, but like. I guess like sort of... intuition is like seeing your way through a problem without actually writing anything down. Would that be accurate? I, I, I agree with that. Not uh, and quite. that's fine. But like, okay. you know, intuition is maybe like a sense of what is more or uh, a sense of what is more or less likely to be true. Yeah, yeah. But that's like, I, I, I but I like Holden's statement. It's just like, uh, it's a bit more concrete about like seeing a problem and already kind of knowing what to do. Oh, yeah. I so mean, like but... having intuition about an Olympiad problem would be like, you read the statement, um, the statement reminds you. Or like, like you, you have like a like entire collection of problems you've done before, and maybe you can like, like notice some similarities, and then notice that if you apply it to this problem you're working on, you can kind of get your way very far through the problem. And you don't have to exactly think of, oh, this exa- looks exactly like, uh, the obscure math Olympiad number. Four. But I do do this sometimes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. I, I, I think like, in, at least in my case, I do. Th- it is helpful to me to have like what I would say is a good memory for math problems. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, I like, guess... you're, you're normal. <laughs> okay, Luke, you're, you're Luke. <laughs> but like, uh, I, I don't think a lot of people can claim the same, but like, the, but that past experience kind of like shows itself in a bit of a more implicit way or when they can figure out like how to approach. 
Yeah, and like it can it can be something that can come with experience. But yeah, I guess I haven't actually answered the question yet. Um, so like yeah, I guess my answer is something along the lines of yes, I get I got like better and better intuition. Um, and you know, I learn more and more about like presenting solutions and you know, like from going to a local math circle, I got practice in presenting solutions and whatnot. And I, you know, the better and better intuition and learning more and more stuff. Um also a phenomenon that happened is like the lower level, like problems on the like lower levels of contests, like maybe like more like short answer contests as opposed to Olympiad problems, like they start maybe to seem a little bit less interesting. Like if you are already sort of like knowing what to do with them, like they're maybe less interesting, except if they're especially nice, if they happen to be especially nice, but like, if they're not that, then maybe they're just less interesting because you like can just solve them. And it's just like more of an exercise. Whereas, you know, maybe Olympiad problems still seem more interesting because you really have to think about them, especially like, and even those have, you know, degrees of more or less interesting. I wonder if 10 years from now, Olympiad problems will seem similarly lacking interest to me. I don't know. Who knows? I think, an, uh, and, uh, and another thing is that uh, I think another step forward in uh, developing as a mathematician is teaching someone like um, in a contest math. I'm not sure how how much experience you guys have had with this, but <clears throat> it's one thing to like solve uh, or uh, to like learn a concept or something on your own. It's another to like just teach it to someone else. And that's like a whole thing. And if you um, have to like redigest it again, maybe you like understand new like obviously this is not an original observation that teaching something makes you understand it better but yeah. like you know if you're digest you like you re-digest it and then you maybe understand more stuff or something mm -hmm. try it you know i think one feeling i get a lot when teaching other people is like when you try to teach someone about a topic you have like the idea formalized in your head as like very simple but when you try to like explain it you realize there's actually a lot more steps involved in like explaining the concept has this feeling ever happened to you guys yeah especially when my student keeps asking why does this work and i'm like uh and i can't just say it just does yeah 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 mm -hmm. but i feel like getting a good handle on like all of the steps involved in like like proving or explaining something that's that seems simple in your head actually just like makes you understand connections better Yeah, and you know, it can be a it, maybe it can be good practice if you end up being a professor someday or something. <laughs> ah, <Yes>. Yeah, <laughs> sounds scary. Be a professor, but yeah, yeah. If if you plan on going into like that realm, um, there's so, uh, there's something else. That uh, another like realm of uh, another thing that I've learned throughout math contests is like not being afraid to ask for help. Because like when I was younger, I would I had like this really weird stake on doing everything independently. Was that ever a thing for you guys? Um, somewhat. I feel like this became less of a thing as I got to know more people in the math Olympiad community through things like math camps and MOP in particular. Mm -hmm. But it still feels better when you, at least maybe, I guess for me to like not look at the solution or something. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, of <clears> course. <throat> but like, you know, ask like, it, it, well, yeah, if like, you're just like completely stuck, right? And in general, talking to people about math is like a good way of operating. Yeah. Yeah. I was like a that was like a really big part of uh my first time at MOP actually. Um Do we want to is... define MOP? Oh right. Uh that's right, I meant MOSP. Also, do we wanna like save this for the next question? Yeah, that's true. So our second question is how was your experience at MOP? What is MOP like? How about the atmosphere? And what's the experience like, fun or intense? And just to remind people, MOP is the Math Olympiad program. It's the program that the MAA runs uh, in the summer with like the top students from the like the Olympiad stuff. Did you say uh, summer? I did say summer. Yes. Though um, it, it, it's, a, it's a program that is run in the summer. 
Though technically, yeah. if you're being if you're being technical no. about equinoxes and stuff, it starts in the spring. Technically, does oh. it? <laughs> yes. But it's uh, at least June twenty. Uh, all right. June no, twenty okay. third. See, yeah. okay. Uh, I went in twenty twenty, which was by the way, which was in which is after the equinox, so it was most definitely in the summer. Uh, so let's see. Uh, okay, I'm a scrub. I have never been to in person mall. And I will never go to Imparsim Walk, which breaks my poor little heart. But come back uh, as a greater. Come oh, back as we'll a greater. <laughs> Maybe. I I, I I don't think I'm good enough for that. But um <laughs> But yeah, just to, for people who don't know, in 2020 and 2021, uh Mop was online for obvious reasons. Our favorite <sighs> COVID. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was at, I was in Mop 2020 and it was online, uh, but I was still super hyped to make it in. I remember when I got the invitation, I literally screamed, uh, my and that was that was probably one of the best days of my life. But Mop itself, oh boy, it's very intense. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, when I got my invitation, my mom was like, I think I told you guys already, but my mom was basically like. Oh, that's I unfortunate. I already signed you up for driving school during that time. Ha! <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you made it when you were in... Oh, oh yeah. You I made it as a freshman in 2018, and then I also went 2019, 2020. Yeah, yeah you, were, you were 15, which makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even start like learning how to drive until like the beginning of COVID. So I was like, I guess... I still haven't started learning how to drive. You should. It's really cool. Okay. Anyway, uh, back to moth, not not driving. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait. We should actually answer the questions. True. Uh, I mean, I, I have I had a lot of experience at in person moth before the pandemic, and like it is really fun. You do meet like a lot of, you know, really neat people. A lot of my you know best friends are people I know from mop, um, and like it is different. Hi. Yes. Like us. Wait, uh, I'm, I'm your friend. I'm, I'm honored. Am I your uh, friend too? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh... <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, getting back on topic. Uh, like, it's not as fun when it's online, obviously. Um, so, like, yeah, it's different. You don't, like, get... You, it's not as much of like hanging out with people uh you don't you're not like around people as much like it's still good but it's not quite the same as just like being all in one place in mm -hmm. in, in recent years it's been held in at carnegie mellon university in pittsburgh in i guess a typical day at mop for me is like well at least when i was in person uh, i would like wake up run to breakfast because i wait like i woke up late or something and then, like, carry Same. the breakfast to my first class. Same. <laughs> and, like, eat breakfast in my first class. Same. And then I would go to the second class. And sometimes I was really slow at breakfast. So, like, I was still at breakfast by the time second class came. Amazing. <laughs> which was 90 minutes later. Um, and then I would run off to lunch. And then if, in the afternoon, there were, like, a few things going on, right? Like, there would either be a test. Um, like, there was problem-solving session. Do you remember that, Luke? Like, study session? Yeah, study session. I am feeling. Or there were just like right assembly, <laughs> or there was like sponsor talk, or there was just nothing, and you could go do whatever. <clears throat> and then, yeah, and then like, in the evenings, there would be like test review if there was a test, and then sometimes there was a seminar. I like the seminars. Um, but yeah, there's because... definitely like a lot of like free unstructured time where people do various things. Like, like at in person mob, people would. One of the things that happened was people played live action mafia like you know like like the game like the party game mafia except that like a day in, in this version a day in the game is a day in real life which is fun <laughs> and like when you so when somebody like you kill someone by like actually tapping them on the shoulder and saying bang and like you are told like you are told where the deaths like physically where the deaths occurred it's it's a fun game but like that's an it's example like among us uh, yeah, no, I was... Among Us is like it. This came first. Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I was killed in a room that like had like tenish people, but I didn't realize that all of them were either not playing or dead already. 
So no one witnessed me dying. <laughs> oh my gosh. In person mop this. In person mop that. Let me tell you about how online mop was. Let's see. Uh you wake up in the morning, you go to class, and it's on Google Meet because that was that was how it was in my year. <laughs> and you know what? Everyone's cameras were off. So you might as well so you're just essentially watching a video uh but actually no not really because like the lecturers would try desperately to get us to like be involved it did not work i no 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 it's, sometimes it worked and then sometimes we were just dead silent then in the afternoons uh you you work on a quiz or a test uh and i would usually like eat some lunch during this um so i would barely get anything done on the problems no i'm kidding i actually solved like a non zero number of problems which is like probably my greatest achievement to date uh then you have some i guess some free time that's like not on, which i i spend not looking at a screen then you have like uh i there was also test review right it's been yes. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 uh then and then there was also some office hour like some virtual office hour sessions and then there was also something called panel which is where uh some group of uh, students interested interested in some topic get to go talk about that topic to the rest of the student body a group of people having a conversation about someone over a video call? What's that? I've never heard of anything like that. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Okay, back to making <laughs> Isabella uh, wish she was at an in-person mop. <laughs> <laughs> what else did we do? Why I am I, I why am I here? Something that happens at both suffer. in person. Something in in person and online mop is the game of Blotto, where it's like you like the general idea is like you have some soldiers and the soul and like you assign like there are some castles that you want to win and so you like assign however many soldiers to each castle and then you like whoever like you know whoever puts more on a castle wins it and then you want to like win more of the castle so you're like oh do you want to put it put a lot on the high on the most valuable one but oh maybe a lot of other people are going to put a lot on that one and then you know or do you want to put it on the less valuable? But maybe you're overthinking it and you actually should put, you know, like it's, it's that sort of thing. Look, man, um, I'll just take your word for it. I didn't participate. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. What else was there? There's also like a lot of activities that like <laughs> MAA or MOP just like lets us go to. Like they, they let us go to an amusement park for free, right? And they also like... I was over here thinking like, that you were going to talk like, about like one of the game sessions or that we have on Zoom, but no, you have to talk about the amusement park that you guys went. Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was it was amusement... fun. What well, was the amusement park really that great? I... Well, like I love amusement an parks. An amusement park in Pittsburgh, I think. Well, I, I hadn't went to one in a very long time. I mean, so. yeah, your your mileage may vary. Shrug. It was, yeah. and it was there was fine. also like a Pittsburgh tour, duck boat tour, something. I forgot what it oh, was I called. Know about this. It's also, like there was also a talent show too, oh, yeah. which happens every year. Oh yeah, and singing troop. But that's like a thing we, at like literally every camp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like took part in a little bit of singing troop, but then I realized I couldn't sing to save my life, so I didn't take part in the final recording. Singing troop is like some moppers sing some songs. Mop choir. Something yeah, like this. Yes. Also, like we've been talking about the tests and the quizzes. Maybe people are wondering what we mean by that. Uh, basically, um, well, it's a bit okay. Like they're like basically, it's practice tests. Normally, like like when MOP was in person, you would have the, the practice tests were all just like three problems in four and a half hours. Pretty much, that was just the only way it would be. Pretty much was the only way. Uh, online, there were some some of the tests were abbreviated that it was just like two problems in two hours. Um, oh, I should say when I say three problems in four and a half hours for some of the students, you, some of the some of them were four problems in four and a half hours for some of the students. Um, and like at in-person mob, there used to be this. There was a test called the TSTST, which is a ludicrous name, but that's what it's called, which has a role in determining IMO selection. But um, that it has a role in determining the next year's IMO selection. The IMO team for that year is already known, like before MOP has started, which is like, it has been this way for at least since like, uh, I don't know, twenty thirteen ish, um, and I guess the point is that it's like, like maybe it felt too competitive, if people were like actively competing for IMO slots, like right there or something. That's before my time. I don't have firsthand experience with it, but 
it's not really a competitive atmosphere like actually you know it's people are very like chill it's and a bit more laid back than you would expect yeah, yeah. Okay. even though but there's it's... a lot of math like during the day or a lot of structured time to do math like people just still do math in the unstructured time anyway yeah because it's bop what would you expect <laughs> um yeah Oh, and there's also, we should mention the Elmo. Elmo uh, meeting. Elmo meeting. Elmo. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Elmo, the Elmo is, stands for a... Uh... It changes every year. But the Elmo is basically like a test that returning year moppers give, like, make and give to the first year moppers. So that's a thing that happens. But yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, we could... We Holden think, was we, my team leader for uh for that elbow. is correct which means i coordinated some of your scores to higher scores much appreciated especially <laughs> on problem one <laughs> yeah. yeah we could <laughs> we could probably we could probably go on a lot longer about mop but maybe that we shouldn't true. go too long mm -hmm. uh because there's like another question that we still <clears throat> should get to yeah uh -huh. so let's get to that then. Um, what are your thoughts on about self-deprecation and hero worship culture in the math community? We have a lot of thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Luke, you, you, okay. you seem you yeah. seem very uh, <laughs> like. Uh, okay, I think if you're watching this, you probably already know what this is like, what I'm thinking. Like, you might want to give a background for people. Actually, no, who... you, you should give some background. Yes, I, yes, I, okay, I will give some background. Some of you may know what I'm talking about, but some of you don't. Um, like, basically, I have had a lot of successes at various math contests, including, you know, the IMO, math counts, that sort of stuff. And so it seems like, you know, kids, who, a lot. there are a lot of kids who do math contests who are maybe like a few years younger than me. And they sort of, they really look up to me, but like kind of like too much. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you say that. Uh, yeah. And so I think like people practically think that I'm God or something. Let me tell you, I'm not God. I will just, I'll, I'll be clear. I'm just a person. My co-hosts are also just people, you know, know that we're just ordinary people who, you know, we happen to be good at, you know, solving some math problems quickly, but we're, ordinary people so like like i think it is good when people have role models who are like aspirational figures you know i want to be like so and so i aspire to be more and more like so and so but i don't think it's good if someone is like so and so is so good I will never be that good. I will bow down and worship this person because of their scores on a math contest. Like, no, no, don't do that. You can like, you should, you should treat it in more of an aspirational way because that's what we want. We want people like, we want the younger generation not to feel like it's just totally out of reach because like, like going back to the topic of mop, sometimes like, MOP doesn't just invite people who we think are going to be on the IMO team that year or the next year or something. The first time I was invited to, the first time I was invited to MOP was in sixth grade in 2016. I didn't make the IMO team until three years later. So they weren't just like, part of it was the thinking of, you know, oh, we want to help lay the groundwork for future talent. And I think that's a, like, that's a good thing more generally. We want that more generally. Like, in particular, there's a thing that I have said to some of the people at MOP, um, which is like, you know, when you're like, if someone is a mopper and aspiring to 
make it to the IMO, like they should remember that their ultimate goal is not make it to the IMO team. It's get a perfect score on the IMO. Because like that is the kind of mindset that can help lead to like USA winning IMO. Um, which is not everything, but it's nice. Um, and so like, yeah, it's like people should try to, yeah, people should view it as an aspirational thing, not as a ridiculously unachievably high thing. Have high goals and actually like believe in yourself that you will get there. And yeah. And obviously like, obviously getting the perfect score on the IMO is hard, but like if you're watching this and you're some middle schooler and you're thinking like, maybe some of you are middle schoolers thinking, wow, I would really like to make mop someday. Set your goals higher. You, you, the sixth, seventh or eighth grader thinking, wow, I would really like to make mop someday. No, no, no. Set your goal at the perfect score on the IMO. <laughs> maybe some of you will do it. Uh, and thank me in six years. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I've been talking for a long time. Do, do you guys have things you want to say? Uh, I mean, a perfect score on the IMO is unachievable for like a like ninety nine point nine percent of the population. But oh, I, I, like, obviously, this is hard. Like, I've been to the IMO three times, and I never got a perfect score. So I know that this is quite hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. See. Uh, for, okay. So from my perspective, I I've noticed that. Okay. Qu correct me if I'm wrong. I think the math community nowadays is like quite a lot larger than it has been in the pre in previous years. Like, well, what do you mean by the math community? Like, uh, sorry, co contest math community. Like, well, uh, mean, is maybe, in some maybe, ways, I maybe, could, but like in other could, ways, like participation. Like, maybe the community of people we see who are like very active on the internet or something. Like, people use the internet more, but in other ways, like mm -hmm. participation on the AMC. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm probably biased. Recently, yeah, yeah, I know. Participation has been has gone down. Uh, but then, from what I could tell, the like the percentage of people who are like really getting into it seems to be okay. You know, I I could just be like talking, like spewing complete falsehoods, but like, um. At the, okay, at the very least, uh, online uh, boards and stuff seem to be, like, a lot more active than they were, right? Right? Yeah, okay. Well, that's just, like, um, a pandemic thing, right? Like, oh, yeah. More. Mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in general, I feel like contest math has be become a lot more approachable for, like, your average person. Uh, so, like, okay, where am like, I going how, with this? How <laughs> average is average? I think that's Not, a whole I don't separate know. topic. Okay, That's yeah, a whole yeah, separate yeah. topic, which is beyond yeah, this yeah. today's episode. Uh, so, like, let, let's see. In general, like, the uh, but like the online scene has gotten like a bit more. I guess uh, there, uh, so. See, math contests now has like its own like culture, uh, which is kind of wild to me because like when I was first starting off, I was not aware that there was like any sort of like real, uh, like community like. I guess culture around this. Uh, look, okay, I I could just be, it, but nowadays it just feels, uh, there's so many, uh, there's so much. I I I have like so many thoughts about this, and I'm not sure how I want to articulate them. Um, but just like what I see a lot of the time is like I I start to see more people like make self-deprecating remarks. About yeah, yeah, oh, okay. like, not that's, good. Yeah, right? that's exactly what I was going for. And that goes hand in hand with the sort of like a hero worship thing. You start to see like the sort of like ors, like to people who don't know, like when you write O R Z in lowercase, <laughs> it like on a computer in lowercase, it's supposed to resemble like the I image of a person we're actually talking about this. <laughs> I think it's important background Look, context. Like it's okay. supposed to resemble you know, a person bowing down. You can imagine yeah, the O okay. with the head. No, no, that, that's exactly what imagine. I was talking about. So like with this like more online based community, you have like more people who are like basically just throwing their scores at each other and like um orzing each other. <laughs> I can't I, why am I saying this? <laughs> and it, it's just uh and that plus the whole self-deprecation thing is just getting like it's 
it's fostering like a more and more i guess toxic act uh, like it's kind it's, of it maybe in some ways obviously not not all of math like we don't want to turn you off from no no, no 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 like there's but a like, lot of good some, stuff yeah there's a lot so, of really you know. great yeah I, I i think the goods of math contests like far outweigh the bads but it's just that uh somewhat recently the like the com like for some people like the competitive has taken over the math part Especially, like, maybe, like, when people are younger, they care about this, like, they f maybe see more competitive, like, they maybe care more about the comparing scores or something. And I can totally relate to that, because, like, when I was, when I was younger, I cared, like, way too much about my scores, uh, kind of to an unhealthy degree. Like, I, uh, whether I wanted to admit it or not, I kind of took it as, like, a measure of self-worth, which is a big, no, no, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Your 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 self worth is not determined by your scores on contests. Please remember this. Like, rem if you remember one thing from this episode, I think you should remember that. Did we also say this on a previous episode? I don't remember. I but remember if we anything. if we did, we we, it, we said it, it again. Repeating. It's worth stating again. Yeah. yeah. Also, Holden, I guess do you want yeah, to say a few those? things? Yeah. On this oh yeah, yeah. Topic? All right. So like, I guess. Like, a lot of times, I, I see, like, people saying, like, oh, I got a 138 on the AMC, like, because I messed up. I'm kind of dumb or something. Like, don't don't say that. um Because, like, saying things like uh, you're, you're stupid or bad at math when solving a hard problem is, like, not okay because, first, it makes other people annoyed, right? And then, second, especially if you get a score like that, it kind of, like, it seems like you're just trying to uh, let other, know, other people know that you're good. And I think the culture should really be one that's, like, really the complete opposite, like one where math students get to work together and, and then learn and develop their math skills. Would you agree? I think it's, in yeah, an ideal world, is... people would be talking about like the fun problems, like the problems that they really liked rather than the number. Yeah, like talk about the problems and not the scores you got on the problem is like important. And especially like if someone is saying, you know, oh, I got an 11 on the Amy, I'm or, you know, oh, I got a 12 on the Amy or whatever. I'm so bad. I only got a 12 or whatever it is. Like, no, if someone says that and then someone else just is sort of sitting over on the side and being like, well, I got a seven on the Amy. What am I supposed to do? Like, yeah. you know, that's the kind of effect it can have. So you're like, please yeah, you know, yeah. do that. And even if you think, like, even if you actually think that your score, like, it, it, okay, look, first of all, a 12 is a fantastic score on the Amy. That is like, that's like well into, in the top. S well, I think like percentile. making Amy already is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But what I was gonna say is like, even if you like don't score literally within the top percent, you should be, you know, proud of the problems that you solve. Like, I I don't think the score really has much. And also, okay. like, this isn't to say that it's invalid if you feel disappointed about a score that mm -hmm. seems like objectively a high number. Like, but you know, like you maybe don't have to go like spreading it all over the internet maybe just like tell it to like <laughs> because then it drags down some or, yeah like a close friend or like i, I don't know a, a parent. parent or a teacher or, i don't know like just you know some things don't need to be said to a very large audience but yeah, yeah this is true. um like if you really wanted to like go around the internet and say that your high score was bad like i feel like no one would rationally do that unless they were trying to let others know that they thought this certain score was bad and they could have gotten a higher score and that they're really good at math or something, which is like kind of not the atmosphere you're trying to aim for. Yeah, okay. But I guess we've already talked for a long time. Um, it seems like we are on, on approximate pace to continue our trend of every episode uh, being six minutes longer than the one before it. Okay. <laughs> hey, you've made it this far. Hi. Thank, thank Hi. You for thank you for watching. Yeah. If you've made it yeah. this far. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I really guess we appreciate should, it. Like wrap up. Mm -hmm. Uh I guess yeah. tune in again in two weeks. Keep sending us more questions. You can use the forum on the MAA's Curious Cube site. We like getting questions. Yeah, send um, us questions and we, we can't wait to see what you've got. And you know, um, I just I wanna reiterate what we said last time about like, you know, telling like if we want to like talk more about like under mathematicians from like underrepresented groups, you know, that we like, you know, that's definitely like an interesting topic that, you know, if you have people that you think we should talk about, like, let us know in particular, um, March is women's history month. 
So, you know, we would probably especially like to hear about uh, notable women mathematicians. So, you know, tell us about your favorite women mathematicians and maybe we might discuss some people you suggest. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Thanks. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Cheers.